joyful sound that Jesus saves, my Jesus saves. So spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves.
Good evening. Welcome to South Asheville Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Yes. Or whether you're watching online, we're welcome. Uh, let's stand and go to the Lord of Prayer as we open up the service. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We just thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord God. We count it a privilege, Lord God, every time we can come together. We just lift up your holy name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon our life. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us, Lord God. We know God you are keeping God, Lord God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for every time. God, bless you, Lord God. I ask God you reach down tonight, Lord God, touch the song service, Lord. Anoint it, anoint the pastor as he brings the word before us. Anoint the offering. Standing, come on, choir. We'll go ahead and start off with the choir tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah.
glory to his name. Kind of goes right along with my uh, little scripture right here. Says, Psalms 1 and 12 says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Glory to his name. Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, we were to Hallelujah. delight in his uh, commandments and we're to fear the Lord. Today, you don't see that fear of the Lord like you used to. People used to have that reverential fear, but you just don't see it today like you used to. But, you know, God, he still, he's in his word. He said, if you want to be blessed, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Yes. Praise God. Let's continue worshiping given. Uh, if we get to us to come and receive our uh, offering this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Albright, would you pray over this time of worship? to bless for your faithfulness and giving. Yes, it will. Uh, announcements, uh, our Valentine's uh, banquet will be on the 18th of February at 5 p.m. And if the widows, uh, any widows wants to sign up for that, we are allowing that. Also, uh, the youth night sign-up sheet will still have some openings on there. And our ladies' Bible study will be on January the 28th at 9 a.m. So if you haven't signed up, sign up on there so we'll have to know how many is going to be so they can prepare for it. Got a lot to pray about. And, Brother Eddie, I want you to come on up here and stand right here, brother. I want you to pray after we uh, give these uh, requests. We've got a lot to pray about, but we've got a great big God. And, you know, what concerns us concerns him. Right. Praise God. Let's uh, continue to remember Sister Sandra in, your, in our prayers. Uh, you know, she needs a touch from God. I'm still believing seeing her sitting right back here on this pew. Uh, also pray for Brother Willard for his complete healing. Continue praying for Sister Millican and Sister Frieda's healing. Uh, continue praying for Brother and Sister Ball. Pray for our upcoming revival with Brother Bowling. You know, that's coming up in March. It'll be here before we know it. Yeah. Let's be praying that God will just pour out His Spirit in a mighty way. Also pray for our pastor as he holds revival down at uh, Ainer Church of God, Brother Tim Julian's church. Pray for that God will give him souls for his labor. Uh, pray, continue praying for Sister Anna's job situation. Also for Sister Amy's job situation. Uh, pray for Donna's brother, Michael. He had 13 blood clots taken out of his lung and said he had some in his leg. And so, you know, that's very, very dangerous. So pray for him. Uh, pray for Brother Floyd. He needs a touch in his body. Pray for Tommy Easterly. He has cancer screening this week that he'll get a good report. Also pray for Nancy McSwain, health issues. Pray for Tori. She needs a miracle. Pray for Sister Garen. She's hurting in her side. Pray that uh, Aaron will be off on Wednesday night as his manager promised that he would be. You know, because like the pastor preached the other night, you know, when people start missing on Wednesday nights, you see that kind of falling away. So, you know, his manager said he could be off on Wednesday night. Just pray that he'll honor what he said he would do. Brother Ed, you come on and pray with this request. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord. While I was praying, somebody touched me.
feel the Lord in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's continue to worship with Sister Amy, Sister Tina, and Sister Sharon come to minister in song. That's what we need, that old-fashioned, heaven-sent, Holy Ghost revival. Praise God. You know, we had just come, had a revival. We're not out of revival. The services have stopped, but we're still in revival. That water's still flowing. If we want to, if we want to get right in there, let's get in there tonight. Let, don't get in just ankle deep. Don't get in knee deep. Let's get in over our heads tonight. Praise God. At this time, we'll turn the service to our pastor, Brother Sheldon. Bless you. Bless you. How many here is thankful for revival? 
we must remain in the spirit of revival. There is a darkness in that world, unlike anything that I've seen before. Maybe you've seen darker days than what we're seeing right now, but I would probably contend you will contend with you over that. These are dark, oppressive times out there in that old world. Amen. And I'm glad that the church can be revived again and again. The psalmist said, Wilt thou not revive us again? It is an ongoing process. We need the touch of God over and over and over. And I'm glad he's willing to do that. Amen. That's his desire is to touch us and to strengthen us uh, and to help us in the journey. Amen. The darker things get in that world, the brighter it is for the child of God. What I mean by that is the darker it is out there, we realize we're closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. I told you the other service, that's what I'm waiting on. That's the next great event that I'm looking to happen is the rapture of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be called up, snatched away, seized out of this old world. We're going to be with Jesus. Amen. Glad to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. It's good to be in church. Amen. Glad you can come. Glad I can be here. Uh, we want to continue to pray for the lost. How many here has a burden for the lost? I don't know. I don't believe you can have Jesus Christ living in your heart and not have a burden for those in sin, for those in bondage, those that are, that are lost that don't know Jesus. I think about it, you know, you say, well, you're a preacher. You're supposed to. I'm a Christian. And Christians are supposed to think about those things. We don't think about the here and now. We're to think about the eternal things. We think about souls that are dropping off into hell. I was talking to somebody today, and I said, you know, there's a, uh, there are such a burden to think that people are literally dropping off into hell. And they're there until they go before that great white throne judgment. Then they're going to stand before God and give an account for everything, all their sins. God's going to record it and bring it all back to them. Every sin they ever committed. They can plead and beg and do all those things, but he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. They're going to be cast alive in that lake of fire. and They're going to be there forever and forever. We, we can't wrap our minds around that. That's hard to comprehend something so terrible and so severe, but that's the case. That's reality. And many more people are going there than people that are dying and going to heaven. And uh, it, it burdens my heart. And the thing of it is, I was thinking today about this. For every soul that you hear that got saved, countless more have died lost. That song says if just one more soul walks down the aisle. I agree with that, but we need more than just one more. We want to win souls and to keep them from dying and going that awful place. For eternity, I've watched people with their deathbed come to the end of their life and be so hard in their hearts that they don't want to hear about God, they don't want to hear anything about the Bible, and they'll drop right off into that terrible place. And uh, the church needs to be revived so that we can be a light in the darkness of this world. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Colossians chapter 1 tonight, glad you're here again. Amen. I love, I know these are my babies. But uh, I love to see these babies in church. I told you Lily's already praising the Lord. You say, Lily, praise the Lord. Those hands will shoot up. And she may not understand exactly what that means, but she sees that. And she's just mimicking what she's seeing. And uh, I'm so glad to hear these little babies in the house of God. Amen. When I pray, I, I walk around this building. I pray over your pews. I pray over the classrooms. But I also pray over that nursery. I walk in that nursery and I pray for the babies in there. And I pray God give us more babies in there. Amen. I want to see more babies brought up in church. More children brought up in church. Because they're, they're caught up with so many things out there in that world. They're out there in that world a whole lot more time than they are in the house of God. And while they're in the house of God, they need to be taught what's right. They need to know what's right by the word of God. Amen. I'm glad these babies are being raised in the church where they can learn the truth. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. We'll read verse 23 tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight. We're glad and grateful to be in the house of the Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus, for all the singing tonight. Thank you for Brother Charlie that done a great job moderating the service, Lord. And thank you for the songs of worship and praise that have made our hearts ready now for the Word of God. I pray, Lord, not, not to help us not to drift tonight in our, our thoughts, dear Lord. I know at times when you in a service, the old enemy comes and tries to distract our minds and get us thinking on other things that have no eternal value. But I pray, God, that our minds will be sharp tonight. Our minds will be in tune with the Word of God. Our hearts will receive what comes into our mind, God. It will run to our hearts. And we will be strengthened by it, Lord. Help us not to let one word fall to the ground tonight. I pray, dear God, that your word and your spirit will do the work in this house. I need your touch now, God. Help me tonight, Lord. As always, I can't do anything without you, God. I'm humble to stand here, Lord. I pray for preachers tonight that stand in pulpits, God. Touch them, Lord, as they preach the word of God. I pray for those that will preach it, and I pray for those that are not, that will get right, and they'll preach the Bible, Lord. I pray you'll touch us in these orders, God, that we'll tarry here, and we'll lay hold of you, and you'll lay hold of us, and we'll bless you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. The Apostle Paul said here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, that means established, we have to get rooted in the faith. I can't be wishy-washy. I can't believe one thing this week and then turn around and believe something else next week. We have to get established in the Word of God. I have to know what I believe and I have to know why I believe it by the Bible. Can you say amen? He said here, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled, established, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. The first part of that again says, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a a minister. Can you give God a hand of praise as you're seated tonight? <laughs> praise the Lord. What a joy it is to be back in the house of the Lord this evening. I'm glad he has afforded us the opportunity uh, to be able to come, to be able to be in the, the presence of God. Isn't that wonderful that we can come into the presence of the Lord and be in the Holy of Holies? can worship Him and can uh, find hope and renewed strength. We can come in the presence of God and know that He's here and He's real. How many here has already been touched by Him tonight? Praise God. We could go home now and say it's been good to be in the house of God. I want to preach to you for a little while tonight. The Lord be in our help, continue in the faith. I thought about this while I was studying this message and I just begin to reflect on uh, the time that I've been in church. I was raised in the church, raised in the church of God, uh, come into it as a baby. I told you before, Brother uh, Ray Loftus dedicated me as a child there at Ashboro Church of God. It wasn't sunset at the time. It was the Ashboro Church of God, and I tell you, it was a wholeness church. And I remember as a boy coming up in that church till I was about seven years old, and uh Oh, they had, they had services there. They had move of God. Matter of fact, I believe I'm correct about this, Sister Sarah's mother. That church was started in her house. Am I right about that? In Mayfon, Sister Mayfon, you know her. She's been here some. It was started in her house, and uh, that thing grew, and God got in it, and uh, they had services back in those days. I still remember that even as a child. Uh, the power of God moving in that place. Brother Loftus, he was tall and long-legged, him across that platform, back and forth, preaching, and the power of God that moved in that place. I, I told Sister Shelton here this week, and, I, you know, I didn't come to throw stones at anybody. I love the church of God. I, I do. I'm an ordained bishop in the church of God. 
That's the only denomination I've ever been in. So, I, you know, I'm part of this. And I told her, I said, you know, that uh, the Baptist denominations, and I love Baptist folks, say amen. I said, I love Baptist folks, say amen. Praise God. There's some good saved Baptist people out there. I told her, I said, if you go to most of our Baptist churches, you're going to find about the same thing in every one of them. If you go to most of our Methodist churches, you're going to find about the same thing in every Methodist church. Most of them sing about the same way. They have about the same beliefs. People look about the same. I said, but if you go into our church of God's, I'm part of the church of God, so i got a right to say this. I'm an ordained bishop in the church of God. I've got a right to say this. If you go to most of our church of God's, and you visit one to the next to the next, you're going to get a different flavor in just about every one that you go into. And I told her, I said, that bothers me because we are a denomination that's supposed to be spirit-filled. We are a denomination that's supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Seem like today that there's such a change, such a, a shift. It hasn't happened just in the last few years. This has been going on for a lot of years now. And I'd love and I pray for the church of God. I'd love for the church of God to get back to our roots, what we were, how we started, the fire that used to burn in our churches. Say amen. It wasn't just in a, one here and another one there and another one way over yonder. There was a time when I was coming up, every church of God you went to for the most part, it was a holiness church. You felt God when you walked in. You didn't have to wonder where you was at. You knew you was in a church of God when you walked in there. Come on, say amen to me tonight. And I thought about that as I was studying this message. And it doesn't seem possible when you look at it, especially as I, I put this on paper. It doesn't seem possible that churches that are alive and churches that are on fire and churches that are evangelistic doesn't seem possible that that type of church could ever die. Doesn't seem possible that a church that's a Pentecostal church that's alive and got the fire of God burning in it, got a river flowing through that place, doesn't seem possible that that kind of church could die. But we have to realize here today that we're every church is just one generation from paganism. Every church is just one generation from complete extinction. Now, I'm not talking about the church of a living God. There's going to be a bride. There's going to be a church that's ready when Jesus comes. She's not going to be mixed up. She's not going to be confused about what's right and wrong. There's going to be a church that's alive a church that's on fire, a church that's in love, a church that lives by the Word of God, she will be a pure bride. She's going to be unspotted from this world. Her garments are going to be pure, and she's going to be somewhere listening when the trumpet sounds and when Jesus comes again. She will be raptured out of this old world. Can you shout amen tonight? But there is a real possibility that churches, I'm talking about now here as us and other churches that are alive and on fire for God, that they can die out. Uh, they, they can become extinct as far as uh, moving and living here as a functioning uh, uh, church of the Lord Jesus Christ here on this earth. Judges 2 and verse 10 said, and also all that generation were gathered under their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works uh, which he had done for Israel. I'm telling you here tonight that that previous generation, they had to let down. They had to let up for that next generation coming uh, to get to a place they didn't even know who God was. There had to be a failure in the previous generation uh, for that next generation coming along uh, for the Bible to say of them uh, that they did not know the Lord uh, nor the works that he had done in Israel. 
When I read that, I realize the grave responsibility that we have upon us as Christians today. The grave responsibility we have as this generation to make sure that the generation coming up behind us, that they know the works of God, that they know the power of God, that they know that there's a God on the throne, that they know there's a God that saves. Now, you listen to me. They may or may not choose to serve this God, but the Bible said of that generation, they didn't even know who the Lord was. They didn't even know the works that he had done in Israel. What I'm telling you tonight is this, is that we must make sure that we're on fire. We must make sure that we live by the Word of God. We've got to make sure that we continue in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ so that this generation coming up behind us, whether they choose to serve God or not, they'll be able to say, I've seen it for myself. I know that the power of God is real. I know that the Holy Ghost is real. I know what holy living's all about. I've heard it preached. I've seen it lived out in the lives of the people of God. You and I have that responsibility that I've got to let my light shine. This younger generation's got to know what revival's really all about. They've got to know what the Word says. They've got to know that how we started in this thing, we didn't change how we lived, but we continued in the faith of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. So whether they choose to know him for themselves, they're going to know what real faith is all about. They're going to know what the fire is. They're going to want to know what revival really means. That is the responsibility of the church. Amen. To make sure this next generation knows that what's been passed down to us. I'm glad for my Pentecostal heritage. I want to remind you at times that not everybody was raised in church. Not everybody's family brought them up in the house of God. Not everybody's mom and daddy took them to church on Sunday morning and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Amen. Not every young person was brought up in a holiness church where they had a good standard about them where they preach the Bible, where they live the Bible, where what you saw on Sunday, how they lived in church, that's what they were on Monday on the job. What you saw on Sunday night in the house of God, that's what they were in their homes. That's how they lived when you saw them out in town. What you saw from day to day, they lived by faith in the Word of God. They were sold out to the Lord of glory. Didn't come to be mean tonight, but I have no confidence. I'll say it loud and clear. I have no confidence in somebody that's lived a holiness life, and today they don't live that holy life anymore. They still say they're a Christian. They still say they love God. I don't have any confidence in that. You may, but I don't. I'm telling you what I started with, what God done in my life. I want to continue in that. I've told you before, I ain't never laid, my blessed God, I ain't never laid down anything for the Lord that I want to pick back up. When I found Jesus Christ and when he found me, I found everything I was looking for. I didn't need anything else. What I found in him uh, was all in all uh, and I still want to live that way today. Uh, I want that next generation to know uh, you can be sold out to the Lord. Uh, you can live your life for him. Uh, you can surrender everything. Uh, you can be on fire for God. Uh, you can be full of the power of the Lord uh, and you can be ready uh, to go to heaven when you leave this life. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thought about my grandbabies. Anybody know I love them grandbabies? Anybody here was early, you saw Oliver, my little buddy boy. Sister Shelton brought him up here to me. Nothing against her. This is just what happens about every time with anybody. 
He wanted me. And when I got a hold of him, I held him, I loved him. Then when I gave him back, he started crying because he wanted me again. It's not that he don't love her, but he just is obsessed with me, and I'm all right with that. I hope he'll stay that way his whole life as long as I'm on this earth. A little Lily, you know, she's now, she's walking, and she, praise the Lord, Leo, she gets them hands up. She don't understand it, but she's seen it happen in the church. She's seen her mom and daddy do it. She's seen us do it. She's watched you do it. There'll come a time when she gets a little older, uh, when you tell her to praise the Lord, she'll know what that means. And there'll come a time you won't have to tell her to praise the Lord. Uh, she'll have her own experience, uh, and she'll praise him on her own. Somebody give God a hand of praise tonight. Amen. I'm getting older now, as some of you are. I think more and more about this generation coming up behind us. I think about these two little grandbabies, and I know some of you have grandchildren. You've got children, uh, amen, uh, that you want to see them blessed, uh, and you want to see the very best for them. Uh, you want them to have better than what you have. Most people, they feel that way. Most parents feel that way about your children, uh, and even more so about them grandbabies. Say amen, Grandma and Grandpa. There's something about those grandchildren. I thought about my grandbabies today uh, while I was studying over here and praying. Uh, and I thought, dear God, I, I want my grandchildren. I, I'm glad they're being raised in church. Uh, amen. Glad they got parents that bring them to church. Uh, if they didn't bring them to church, uh, we'd go by and get them, make sure they were in church. Uh, it is important that from an early age, uh, before they can remember anything, uh, that you raise them in the house of God that you're faithful to keep them in church. I'm telling you down the road, when all of hell comes against them, as they get a little bigger, and the devil starts trying to draw them away into a life of sin, they're going to remember what they learned in Sunday school. They're going to remember the songs as they sit on the pew. You may not think they're listening. You may not think they're paying attention, but they hear what's going on. They see what's taking place in the house of the Lord. I want these two grandbabies of ours. I want them as they grow. I want them to know that grandma and grandpa or, or pops and Gigi as we're called. I want them to know that they've always lived the same. As we get older, time stands. As far back as I can remember, my pops was a preacher and he always preached the same and he always lived the same and he had power with God and he had faith with God. I don't want them to grow and say my Pops used to preach this way, but he preaches something different today. Used to live this way, but he lives completely different today. I want the faith that I live. I want to pass it on to my children. I want to pass it on to my grandchildren. I want your children to know about it. I want your grandchildren to know about it because I want them to know the purity and the power of God Almighty in their lives. Somebody shout amen. There's a world out there who wants to rob their minds. There's a world out there that wants to that, that, that lead them away and deceive them and lead them in the complete opposite direction of the word of God. They, they want to lead these young people today in sin that's deeper than what we ever knew about when we were coming up deep seeing things that gets a stranglehold in their lives. That's why it's important uh, that we as parents and grandparents, uh, amen, this ain't in my notes at all, what I've been preaching for the last little while here. Uh, just believe the Spirit of God's leading me this way. Uh, that's why it is necessary uh, as moms and dads uh, that you take them children to church, uh, that you raise them in a Christian home. Uh, don't you hypocrite in front of them. Uh, don't you be one thing in church uh, and do something different uh, in that home. Uh, you live before them. Uh, 
that life of faith uh, so that as they grow, uh, they're going to know uh, that's the one thing that kept you grounded uh, and kept you established uh, and kept you going uh, when you could have fallen apart, uh, when you could have quit, uh, when you could have let it down. Uh, but your faith in Jesus Christ, uh, it kept you pressing on. Uh, you continued in the faith uh, and you continue to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So continue to live that faith before them. There's so much confusion today in this church age. Amen. Everybody says it's this way or that way or this way or that way. I, you, know, I, you know, I don't, I don't ever go around bragging on me because I'm nobody without God. But I will tell you something about me, Brother Benny. I've always lived the same way since I got saved. I've always preached the same message since I got called to preach. Can't preach quite as hard as I used to because I'm getting older now and I feel it now. But I'm telling you, my children, what they've seen in our lives is that their mom and I have always lived the same life. There's been no deviation. There's been no change in how we live. There's been no change in how we serve God. Amen. What we started with, uh, where God brought us from, uh, we've not drifted back to that. Uh, we've not slipped back into that. Uh, but we have pressed onward uh, and upward with the Lord being our help. Uh, I want our children to always see that in our lives. I think about Brother Albright and Sister Albright. They've got children that are lost. I'm not telling you something you don't know. He talks about it at times. Amen. But what those children do know uh, they're not serving God right now. Amen. But what they know is, uh, is that their mom and dad does serve God. Their mom and dad's always live the same. They've always served the Lord the same. They're not this way this month. They hadn't run over in this direction the next month. They've always walked that straight and that narrow road. I'm telling you, we owe it not only to the Lord of glory, but we owe it to the next generation to stay on that straight and narrow path, to walk it right, to live it right, and to love it right, so that my friend, when they come up, they may not serve God, but they're going to know how to serve God. They're going to know what's right. They're going to know what's wrong. And that is the responsibility of you and of me. The Apostle Paul said to continue in the faith, to continue in what you know, to remain, to get established in it, to get rooted in that thing, and to serve God the right way. We can't afford to cut corners, not only for our own soul, but for the souls of our family, for the souls of our children. That's why it burdens me so when I, I hear of pastors and preachers who have compromised and they don't have the same standards that they used to the standards they raise their children with. Uh, today, they don't have those same standards. Uh, I'm telling you, that don't just affect that church they pastor. Uh, that affects their family. Uh, that affects their children. Uh, that affects their loved ones. Uh, that's why we can't afford uh, to drift away from the Lord. Uh, we can't afford uh, to grow cold in our walk with God. Uh, we can't afford to become lukewarm uh, in our faith. Uh, but we got to stay on fire. Uh, keep our faith on fire. Uh, Stay the course uh, and make sure uh, that that generation coming after us, uh, they're going to know what it is uh, to live a holy life. Uh, they're going to know what it is, uh, the power of God. Uh, they're going to know what it is uh, to see a church on fire uh, and to be in revival. Uh, they may not love God, uh, but they'll know what it means to. Uh, raise your hands and praise him tonight. Our children are suffering today. Our children are being pulled at by a world that's unlike anything that we've ever seen. Our children, that old devil today, is deceiving them and twisting their minds. You know, when I was coming up, I, I was raised in a Christian home, raised in a preacher's home. I got in high school. I shared with you the other service. I got in high school. When I did, I got away from the Lord. Got away from, you know, that, that 
my bearings, what I was raised, how I was taught. What I remember is this. Those nights out of those parties and doing those ungodly things that I was doing, I'm telling you in my heart I knew that this was not right. I knew this was not the way that I was raised. I knew this is not how my mom and daddy taught me. Let me tell you something about my mom and dad back then. When I was coming up, uh, amen, my mom and dad, they were not hypocrites. What they were on Sunday morning, that's how they lived on Monday. My mom and dad lived a godly life. I was blessed to have that. Not every child comes up in such a home. My mom and daddy loved the Lord. My daddy would pray and fast. I can hear him praying right now as, a, as I'm a young man coming up in that home. They taught me what was right, not just in what they said, not just in their words, but also indeed how they lived their lives. My mama, all these years, my mother's sick right now. God's going to move. The Lord's going to do something for her. Say amen. She hadn't served him all these years, and he's just going to fail her now. God's going to move. God's going to do something miraculous. Ah, blessed God. I said God is going to do something miraculous, and we're going to be witnesses of it, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to celebrate. I know she is, but we're going to celebrate right along with her. My mother's been at this church since 1978. All these years she's been faithful at this church. I don't ever remember my mother laying out of church. I don't ever remember my mother just not going. I've seen her go when she was sick. I've seen her go when she didn't feel good. I've seen her go when she was going through battles. Hey Amen. All these years she's been serving God. I'm telling you, God's not going to just let her go now. He's not just going to let her drop now. He's not just going to give up on her now. He knows where she is. I said he knows where she is. And he's going to show up right on time. He's an on-time God. Oh, yes, he is. Yes. Somebody give him praise for it tonight. You believe it. I believe that. She's in a hard place right now. She said she'd rather the Lord take her own. I said, Mama, he's not going to take you anywhere until it's your time to be taken on. God's going to move here. There's too many people praying for you. Too many people touching God for you. Too many people, you know, that's on that hotline to heaven uh, that's, that's touched the throne of God. Amen. God's going to do something wonderful and miraculous, uh, and we're going to be witnesses of it. Say amen. Amen. I'm glad for the way I was brought up. I'm glad for my Pentecostal heritage. I've been at this church since I was since 1978, left for a year to go pastor another church, uh, and the times that I was in and out when I was a young man. Uh, but, but from 1978, this is all I've ever known. Uh, it is the Pentecostal way, uh, holy living, uh, separated and consecrated uh, and sold out to God. Uh, I was thinking this afternoon, uh, people say you're too straight. Uh, I'd rather be too straight uh, than to be a little bit crooked. Uh, I said I'd rather be too straight uh, than to be a little crooked uh, and miss out when Jesus comes. Uh, I want to say it again. Uh, I ain't never laid down anything of this world uh, that I have a desire uh, to go back and pick up again. Uh, I'm longing to go home. Uh, I'm longing to see Jesus. Uh, I'm longing for Jesus to come and call us out of this old world. Hallelujah to God. Bible said there come a generation that didn't even know who God was. They didn't even know about the works of God. That tells me that the generation prior to that, before that, some of them had to let down. They had to drop the ball. Something had to happen in that home where the kids were not hearing about it. They were not seeing it. And when they got older, they didn't even know. They had no recollection of the works and the power of God Almighty. That is the responsibility of you, Mom, and you, Dad. I know that there's mothers uh, that's having to raise those children uh, 
on their own because that father's too sorry. Oh, great God. I believe I'll say that again. Because that father is too sorry to, to do his responsibility and to raise those children the right way. That father will stand before God. That father will give a greater account than that mother will uh, because that's the role of the father as the head of the home uh, to lead that family in the ways of righteousness, uh, to lead them to church, uh, to lead them in prayer, uh, to lead them by example. Say amen to me. Uh, I said that's the responsibility of that father. Just because that father shirks his responsibility, that mother's having to raise them children themselves. I'm telling you, don't you allow that uh, to cause you to get lazy uh, in how you raise them uh, and say I'm the only one doing it. Uh, amen. God will give you the grace. Uh, God will give you the strength. Uh, and you raise them kids the right way. Uh, I'm telling you, when they get old, uh, they're not going to depart from it. That means uh, they're going to remember how that mama lived. Uh, they're going to remember how that mama raised them. Uh, and somewhere down the road, uh, we got to believe they're going to get right with God. Uh, and they're going to serve the Lord just the way that we do. We have a great responsibility to continue in this faith. I've watched people drop out of church over the years. I've watched people leave one church and go to another church. That's all right if that's God's will for you. I've watched people leave church, go to another church because that church wasn't as strict as the one they left. Because they didn't want to live tight. They didn't want to live straight. They wanted to, you know, play church. They wanted to say I'm a Christian but still live to please that flesh. That child knows that. That child sees that. I've had people tell me, I don't understand why my children won't serve the Lord. And I'm thinking, I know why. Because how you live in front of them. Because of the way that you've raised them. You've not raised them to go to church. You've not raised them to love God. You have not raised them to live right. No wonder they don't want to go to church. No wonder they don't want to serve the Lord. I'm telling you right here and right now, amen, you and I have had to draw a line in the sand and say from this day forward, I'm going to set that example before my children. I'm going to continue in the Word of God. I'm going to continue to live right. When things get hard, I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. When the way seems impossible, I'm going to keep on serving the Lord. When it seems like I'm not going to make it, I'm going to continue. I said I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue I'm going to live this faith and I'm going to make sure that next generation knows that you can serve God that you can live for him that you can love him that you can go to heaven when you leave this world somebody raise your hands and praise him tonight hallelujah to God I love my family too much, and I love your families too much to say that's how they used to do, and that's how they used to live. My mom and daddy used to go to church. My mom and daddy used to read the Bible. My mom and daddy used to pray. My mom and daddy used to wouldn't go to those places. My mom and daddy used to wouldn't dress that way. My mom and daddy used to wouldn't do those things. Now they are today. I love my children and my grandchildren and your families and your, your children and grandchildren too much to say it's okay now. We don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to live that way anymore. We can change and everything will be all right. I just want to encourage you tonight. Sister, come on, get ready to play. Where she goes? She's not even in here. I can preach a little longer than good. I hadn't even touched my outline tonight. I want to encourage you as the saints of God. I want to encourage you to continue in this faith. What you know to live and how you know to live by that Bible. Don't you let anybody or anything or any devil or any spirit cause you to shift or to say it's just not that way anymore. I don't have to believe it that way anymore. This is 2023. I don't care if it's 2523. We're going to continue to live by the word of God. 
people that have a problem with it, and they don't have a problem with me. they got a problem with him and his words. Say amen. I said people that have a problem with the way that I live, the problem they have is not with me. The problem they have is with the word of God and with him. Nothing to do with me. I want to keep on living the faith. I want to keep on serving God. I want these young people. I'm proud of these young people in this church. We've seen them get out, not these. I don't think any of these have. We've seen them get out of church, and some had not come back to church. It just seemed to be a trend, you know, from church to church. But if, if they get out, I pray that they don't. Uh, but if they get out uh, and they come back 10 years down the road, uh, when they come in, I want them to see we're the same church. We still teach and preach the same thing. We still live the same life. The fire of God still burns. The river still flows. The Holy Ghost is still real in our midst. Amen. If they get away and get out in that world and they return home, they come back to this church. I don't want them to walk in here and say, Dear God, what happened? This church used to be completely different. It's not the same place. It's a strength. No, no. When they come back, if they come back, I want them to walk right back in like they never left. People are still on fire for God. People still love the Lord. People want to live it right. People love each other and they want to go to heaven. There's salt and their light in this air today. We can't afford. We can't afford not to continue. Not to be faithful every day. Not to live this out. Listen to me. You can live a certain way for years and blow your testimony at, at one time, all of it. You can blow all of it at one time. So the most important thing is to stay close to God. Come on, sister, thank you. Stay close to God. Stay on fire for the Lord. Make sure that you're living a life in this here and right now as this generation, that these ones coming up behind us, I'm not talking about just the babies. I'm 50. I'll be 52 in April. But those in their, their teens and their 20s and their 30s, that they know when they get around us that that brother has been living the same way all these years and loving God all these years. He hadn't lost a step. He hadn't lost as far as spirituality. He's gaining ground and he's in love with God. I want them to know that if they live the way I live, they can go to heaven. They don't have to wonder. I want my kids to know if I live like my dad lives, I can go to heaven. I want my grandkids to know when they get bigger, time stands and we're here. I want my grandkids to be able to say, if I live like Pops and Gigi, I'm going to be able to go to heaven. I'm going to live a good, clean, holy life, and I'm going to be able to go to heaven when I leave this world. Can you give God a hand of praise as you stand, please? Just play softly, please, just softly. I've been so burdened by this. I've been so burdened by so much change. It doesn't just affect that, that one individual, it affects everybody around them. My grandpa, I don't know, maybe I'm the exception. I know I'm not the only one. My grandpa's the best man that I've ever known on this earth. The best man. I wish my son-in-laws could have met him. Sister Shelton said I'm a whole lot like him. That's an extreme compliment to me. Grandpa's one of the best, is the best man I've ever known in my life. And all the years of coming up and him preaching, he was a preacher since I can remember back, as far back as I can remember, he's preaching the gospel, carrying the gospel. And all the years of hearing him preach and sitting under his ministry, even till the day up to the point that he died. My grandpa always lived the same. I never saw any deviation in his life. That's why I have so much love and respect for him because he preached the Bible and then he lived what he preached. And I never saw him change, sister. 
Sarah. That impacted me as a young man more than I can tell you. I grew up with friends and good friends that I love and still love to this day. Some of them were not brought up in Christian homes. Some of them, maybe their mom went to church, but she, but you know, being around them, I knew how she lived wasn't right. I knew that as a, as a teenager. I knew that that's not how you live if you're going to be a Christian. But I had the privilege of being around my grand, my granddad, Sister Shelton. First time she heard him preach, we were she was 16. I believe I was 17. I told you I was so afraid to bring her to the church because people worshipped. And Grandpa, my Grandpa, he wasn't very, when he preached, he didn't jump around a whole lot. He didn't, he'd get red-faced and his goose were flat. I can see him right now shaking that head and his goose were just flapping. I got one of them now. Mine's thyroid, what I tell Sister Shelton. Either that or ice cream cakes. But every now and then, he'd get happy. And I can see him right now putting his hands down by his side. He said, I, I feel like running. And he'd take off across the front. Oh, and heaven to move in that place. And I was so afraid when I brought Sister Shelton that church, I said, this girl will never go out with me again. And she, gets, she was raised in the Methodist church. They didn't do that. We got in that service, and people got happy. My grandpa got to preaching. Sweat got to dripping. I'm scared the whole time. This will be the last time this girl goes out with me. But she said, I felt something in that service that day. She said, when I saw your grandpa preach, I, preach, I knew that's what that Bible was all about. That's how he lived. That's the influence I had in my life. I'm, I'm so grateful today. When I was younger, I didn't think about it. But, but now, growing up, serving the Lord, I'm so thankful for my heritage. I'm so thankful for that, I, that I had people in my life that they didn't, they didn't do that. They didn't change how they lived. They knew what they believed, and they stood on it. What wasn't, wasn't easy at times. It's not easy at times today. But they were anchored in what they believed, and they continued in that faith. And I have been a, a blessed recipient of that. I'm that next generation that knows about the power of God, that knows what it is to live right, to know how to serve the Lord. Because I witnessed it firsthand day in and day out by people who love God and continued. My mother to this very day has continued in that faith. I'm a blessed man. That's the responsibility we have tonight. Everybody come, please, if you can. Stand around the front here. If you're able to come, stand. If not, you can pray at your pew. We're going to pray tonight. The Apostle Paul, when he came down to the end of his life, the Apostle Paul's life would have been a whole lot easier if he hadn't continued in that faith. He wouldn't have suffered nearly the way he suffered. May have never spent any time in prison. May have never been beaten. If he had not continued in what the experience he had there on the the road to Damascus when he got saved. If he had not continued in that, his life would have been a whole lot easier. He'd have had a whole lot more friends, been a whole lot popular, more popular. But he continued in that faith. And he lived that faith and he preached that faith. When you got around the Apostle Paul, you knew what he believed and you knew why he believed it. You knew what that man lived. That's how it's supposed to be with us on our jobs, in our homes, out there in that world. When people get around us, they're, they're supposed to know what we believe by the way we live. He come to the end of his life. He's not long from laying his head on Nero's chopping block, going to have his head removed from his body. 
his final letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy, he said this before his death. I have fought a good fight. In that prison, there's no doubt in my life, he knows he's going to die. And he reflects back on his life of serving God. I've heard of people doing that. They come down to die and they just begin to replay in their mind their life, their experiences, the good and the bad. The Apostle Paul in that prison know he's not got long to live now. He reflects back on his ministry. He remembers the souls saved, the lives changed. He remembers the sermons that he preached. He remembers the beatings, the stonings, the shipwrecks. He talked about it. He remembers all the sacrifices. He can feel the scars on his body. But he didn't say, boo-hoo, woe is me, I've had a hard life. No, he said, I fought a good fight, Timothy. To that young preacher coming up, that next generation, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I finished. I kept the faith. I continued in the faith. What he taught Timothy, what he lived before Timothy. He said, I've lived this whole life serving God, my time serving the Lord. This is how I've lived. I've continued in this. I fought a good fight. Now, now I'm ready to go and receive my reward. It was such a powerful life that here we're preaching about it all these years later, nearly 2,000 years later, we're still preaching about that man's life and how he served God, how he loved the Lord. Demas started out, but Paul said, Demas has forsaken us, having loved this present world. Demas started out living right, doing good, but then Demas didn't finish. He quit. He gave up. You and I are accountable for how we live to make sure that when we come to the end of our journey, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. My family, I can say to them, I have kept the faith. I've kept the faith. When I leave here, I'm going to my reward, and if you live for God, if you'll keep the faith, you're going to receive the same reward. Can you shout amen tonight? That's my desire. How about yours? I want to keep on living for God. Lay your hand on somebody if you're able to, if you're comfortable to tonight. 